Hey guys, here I am. Why am I here? I'll tell you why. Because you guys have asked me for a little bit now. Some of you, not all of you, but some of you have asked me to do another uh, military reaction video. You know, me reacting to other military videos. And I love the idea. I like the idea. I have a good, I have a good time doing it. But I just haven't found a video I wanted to react to in a while. So, you know, what am I going to do? Until recently, tonight in fact, um, <clears throat> I was looking up reviews of my own to help me build a model. Because I'm like everybody else, I, I like to look for reviews, I look for help for things, I don't, I don't only make reviews on things. Like, there's shit I don't know, there's tons. So anyway, uh, if you guys don't know, um, I have a second, mod a second YouTube channel, small little tiny channel, where I, I like to build models and show the process and talk about it. Talk a lot about the history behind the subjects. And just in my own life, I build models. I always have since I was a kid. It's very stress relieving for me. So I ran across um, this uh, layout for what we would call a heritage bird. There's your military history lesson for today. Heritage bird, which is when you, uh, a, a unit, a modern unit, paints one of their modern fighters to resemble the markings and paint scheme of an older throwback in time, uh, this case, the 188th fighter wing is wanting to, I'm sorry, the 122nd fighter wing wants to ma want, made one of their F-16s look like what one of their old P-47 Thunderbolts looked like back in World War II. They had a very famous one, it's called Tar Heel Hal, but that's a, that's a whole other, never mind. So one of the important things to know about the story is that, see that? This is, this is specifically an F-16C Block 25. What does that mean? Who cares? That's geek stuff. But in order to build the best representation I could, um, I was looking for reviews on what maybe perhaps the best F-16C kit out there was to help me build a Block 25, because there's a lot of F-16 kits out there. And I was looking for one that maybe came with one specific accessory um, called Midlife Upgrade Strengthening Plates, more geek level shit that nobody cares about. So I did the clickety clack, find me a review of this thing that I need to help me do what I want to do. And the very first video that came up was an unboxing of the exact Tamiya brand model kit I was thinking about looking at for building this. So of course, play. Now, it's at this point that I want to say nothing in this video, nothing I say, nothing I do. I am not, I am not trying to embarrass anybody. I am not trying to beat somebody up. I am not out to, um, I'm not out to like get views and, and uh, make my video. On, on you know on the basis of bashing someone else's video however comma if you are going to put a video out and you're going to talk about a product and you're going to talk about the subject of that product bro you got to know what you're talking about you can't just like liking something a whole lot is not the same thing as knowing about it and uh, we see that a lot. And look, I don't know everything. I don't know everything. I don't know a lot of stuff. In fact, there's a, I mean, <laughs> fair to say there's a whole lot more in the world I don't know that I do. Um, but I, I try really hard not to, not to babble and talk about the stuff I don't know about. Now you can clearly see the guy in this video is passionate about what he does. He likes to build models. He's excited to build this kit. I, and I granted, but it took me probably 30 seconds of hearing him talk about this kit and the F-16 before I threw up my first hands and went, oh, Jesus, here we go. Um, and I said, you know what? The guys who like to see me react to military videos would probably really like to see me react to and, and correct this video because it is it is whatever. Um, so the, I'm, not, I'm not giving you the channel name that it came from and I'm not showing any of the parts of the video with the guy's face because I am not I'm not out here to embarrass any one person. I am here to give an example of if you're if you're gonna talk about something know what you're talking about and don't try to make it up as you go just because you want to make the video because that doesn't work i mean listen a little research doesn't take that long anyway so we're gonna jump into this video already in progress he spends the first five six minutes i don't know maybe less talking about like any youtuber might where has he been what's going on in his life some health problems some other stuff he's working on Total fair ground, you know, no complaints, can't argue with it. And then we're gonna get into, we're gonna get into the fun. 
Um, so, for our beverage entertainment, listen guys, you haven't seen this before. I found this in a box unpacking war stuff. This was something you had to be downrange to get your hands on. They sold it in, in our little deployed BXPX. I have never I have never had a drink out of this thing before. Um, it is it is a cool little glass stein in honor of Iraqi freedom. It even had came with this numbered certificate of authenticity. Like somebody's gonna fake that. But anyway, so we will be drinking my fa my favorite video watching drink. It is Blue Mountain Dew with a splash of grenadine and a healthier, bigger splash of Blue Chair Bay um, coconut rum. I'll be drinking for most of the inaccurate statements of this video, you guys will see. So let's start rolling right along and let's see what we've got as we react to a very special and fantabulous unboxing of a Tamiya 148 scale F16C Block 25 slash 32. Those are two different models of the airplane. By the way, you're welcome that I cut out the part where he talks about the bubble in his stomach that makes it impossible for him to burp and makes him nauseous all the time. So at 319, right, so we get rolling the, uh, into the actual video, which is, you know, respect. like I said, respectable. I get it. He wants to catch his viewers up on what's going on. No problem. All right, so there's the kit. Uh, it's 148 scale. Uh, they give you decals for two uh, different uh, Air National Guards. One two is, different Air uh, National Guards? Or units California. within the Air National Guard? Do we have different Air National Guards? Arkansas. Now, the really funny thing is, is... How many Arkansas National Guards do we have? 188 actually came into my FBO. He's a civilian airport guy, by the at, way. Uh, is what is what that work. means. So, um, I wasn't able to do a walk around of no, that No, you aircraft couldn't do a walk around about that around that aircraft because you got no business being around a military uh, aircraft and they wouldn't let you near that. it, is um, why. <clears throat> price tag on this kit was at Dibble's Hobby on Donaldson Avenue in San Antonio. That I found out that if you call them and you give them a list of all the models that you want, you can actually, they'll actually see if they have them, if they have them and you like the prices, they'll actually put them off to the side Wait a minute. and you come pick them up if you're in Texas or you could, or they could probably mail them out to you and take a payment over the phone. You mean, wait a minute, you mean if you contact a store and you give them a list of products and they have them, they'll, they'll put them together and sell them to you. Awesome concept. I wonder if anybody's tried that. Possibly through mail order or on the internet. It's a groundbreaking, it's a groundbreaking. I'm glad he figured it out. I'm glad he discovered it. All right, so give that, uh, give the little support to uh, Dibbles Hobbies on Donaldson Avenue, plus also HQ Hobbies that's in Milford, Connecticut. That uh, I'll have the link to HQ Hobbies. I've been to Hobbies. HQ Hobbies. All I've right, actually so, been to HQ Hobbies. It's a cool store. Uh, this kit it is a cool store. cost me $73. My grandmother and... doesn't live too far. Oh, wait, we're about to do all the math. That's a two. Is it a two? Is it a three? Is it a 72, 73? What? All right, yeah, so it Is cost it? me huh? all together. It was supposed to cost me $73 even. Uh, I got a little bit of a discount, which was 65. Then they added the taxes, which came out to be 71. So all together, $71.12 was... I have never seen anybody analyze That's a receipt good. That's on a, a video good the way he does. for a Tamiya kit. Now, <clears throat> I've already started this. I started to slightly open up the box. I could have gone to eBay and figured out exactly how much that kit cost for anybody, which is exactly I what he paid with his actually, discount and everything. I'm actually opening up this box. I think it's time for another drink. All right. So first thing first, as you all know, we always go through the instructions <sighs> first before I start opening up the bag. Uh, it'll be a couple of it'll be stops in between, so mm. I can hold the phone and do the. Um, Dude, they make tripods for phones. Parts. I mean, if you're gonna be doing this. All right, so. They make cameras uh, and they make, very they make simple. tripods oh, for your phones. Uh, we'll yes, just... they give you, they actually give you uh, three different, um, they give you decals and paint schemes for three different aircraft. All right, so you got the Block 32 uh, 
California Air National Guard, you have the Block 25 for the Air National Guard, and then you have the other Block 32 for the Arkansas Air National Guard. So, I'm just saying, I'm, I don't want to say anything uh, bad about it, dude, cockpit, but like, I, uh, I'm willing really, to bet that uh, gun to his head to save him and his kids' lives, he couldn't tell you the difference between a Block 25 and a Block 32, you know, if, if anything. I mean, just, you know. He'd probably be like, one is one is a different National Guard than the other. I don't know. The uh, paint codes for the pilots are, are, are really nice. If, you, if you've never built a model, don't worry about it. I mean, these are just instructions. Some instructions are better, are more detailed and more visually descriptive and accurate than others. That is true. Uh, I actually like how they have the different helmet. That's the old traditional helmet. This is the newer helmet that was able to. Uh, I think that I think this is the one that uh, is connected to the heads-up display. What? So and I, I, don't, huh? I don't. I just don't know if the F-16s now have the heads-up display that, what? that you can see on your helmet. Huh? I know the F-22 and the 35 has it. Oh but boy. I don't know if they if if it integrated with the helmet. All right, Buckaroo Banzai. First of all, it's not. A uh, helmet connected to a heads-up display. Heads-up display is a separate thing in the cockpit in front of the pilot's face. The helmet that you're talking about, that the new that was, is it new or is it was, it's called the Joint Helmet Mounted Queuing System, or what we refer to as Jehemix, and it was on F-16s, F-18s, and F-15s before it was on F-22s and F-35s. Uh, like I'm saying, you know, dude, a little bit of Googling would educate you and arm you for this battle very easily. And it's not just, the thing is, it's not just a heads-up display. It doesn't just, it, again, people don't know. And I get it. It's okay to not know. But don't talk about it if you don't know about it and just give out crappy information. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Um, and I'm not here, I'm not here to do like an educational video on the joint helmet-mounted queuing system versus the Soviet slash Russian helmet mounted sight or what it actually displays or how it does it or what you know My point is his information is directly straight up his ass and he should pull it out and spread it out and See what the real information is and then he can make a much more credible video. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying I'm gonna have another drink for the older aircraft It's hard to drink with this thing, you know in a hat a lot of ordnance, guided bombs, sidewinders, uh, uh, um, it says it right there. AMRAM, uh, AMRAMs, uh, external tanks, and the, uh, the EMC pod. Or the ECM pod, it says it right Ooh, there. It even has the, uh, lighting, uh. Light, let's spell uh, it out, sound, sound it out, buddy. Sound it out. Pod 2. Light. Which, uh, I believe that's for, um, infrared. I believe you're fucking wrong! I believe the AAQ-26 Lightning 2 Targeting Pod Advanced Attack and Targeting Pod does give you an imaging infrared image, but it also gives you an outstanding full-color video image. I believe it also provides laser range finding and laser designation, and to just say, it, I'm done. Never mind. Never mind. Google! Google is your friend. No, I'm not done. It also can commute. Sorry, it can communicate with the targeting system on the aircraft. It can use the aircraft's position in time and space using the inertial navigation system and the global positioning system. It can use that laser range finder to then reach out, find out the exact distance and direction to a target, get the exact coordinates of a target, and then program that in to a GPS aided bomb, like a GPU, uh, G, bleh, a GPU 38, or uh, you know, GB31 or something like that. It, but, but it's an infrared lightning pod to. He didn't even pronounce lightning right. It is written for him. Infrared bombing. It looks like you could uh, load it up. For, it looks like you could load it up with a lot of ordnance. I mean, that looks like basic two external tanks and uh, and one major tank. Oh, a major tank! 
and then the you have your major team, tank. Uh, no, dude, <laughs> this, is, this is the funny part. This is what you don't understand. That middle thing, those on the wings, those are 600 gallon wing tanks. The one that goes underneath is a 370 gallon tank. But, you know, one, it's a major, like this is, he's making shit up as he goes, okay? And why? Because I don't know. It's a major tank though. I, I would have to say that based on fuel capacity, if the 370 gal is a major tank, then the 600 gallon under the wings are probably kernel tanks, right? Can we all agree that that makes sense? That like we've got a major tank and two kernel tanks under the wings? I think the, are those the team? Yeah, no, these are not the AIM-9 Sidewinders. These go with H. I believe H. Yes, they are, fuckface. The They're AIM-9Xs. That doesn't look anything like an AIM-120. You were just looking at the page. Yes. The, oh, I'm sorry. That's a different. Uh, that's the uh, AIM 9X Sidewinders. And then oh. you have your AIM 9Ms. They're up at the. Like, I want to say it again, guys. I'm not mad because the guy doesn't know everything. I'm mad because the guy didn't take it. Just, it was right. Th it was. Whoop, there. It was right in front of him. And he's just talking. Top. And then you can load it with. Or you can have this one where. C section where it, it has gives a C section? You massive, massive. Amount of that's ma massive bombs, amount of ordnance, huh? Side. That's pretty massive. Let me, mm, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm sorry, I get hyped up over this stuff. This is, I, you know what? I said I wasn't trying to embarrass anybody. I'm not trying to make anybody look bad, but the guy is just so clueless. <sighs> Each one of those bombs, okay, those are GBU 12s. They're 500 pound class um, laser guided bombs. Each one of those is roughly around 500 pounds. They're not exactly 500 pounds. Um, so you got about a thousand pounds of bombs on each of those hard points where they're going. Each one of those hard points can sling, in one bomb anyway, can can sling um, a single 2,000 pound bomb or what we call a multiple ejector rack. A multiple ejector rack can carry up to six. Mark 82 500 pound, 500 pound bombs. And the F-16 can carry up to four of those fully loaded multiple ejector racks. And then it can still carry, you know, some uh, missiles on the wingtips and then missiles on the inboard stations. Like, so I don't know what this guy's, you know, where his reference point for what is massive. I'm sure his wife is just, his poor wife. If this guy, you know, with his understanding of what massive is and what it really isn't. But he... <laughs> This is not massive. This is actually a very light load for an F-16. And this is a light load on purpose because um, in, you know, Operation Enduring Freedom, Operation Iraqi Freedom, and other things that came after, there's not a lot of targets for you to need to haul, you know, a total of 16,000 pounds of external ordnance for. So four precision guided munitions allow you to strike four specific targets. It allows you to maintain good G-loading and maneuverability on the aircraft. And most importantly, you're not burning a metric shit ton of gas. The F-16 is one of the worst in terms of fuel capacity uh, tactical aircraft we have. So, you know, that weight to gas to time the sky ratio is really important on the F-16, um, which is why very often more often than not, you see that inboard pylon is carrying a 600-gallon fuel tank rather than more bombs, which it easily could do. But, but civilians, amateurs, oh, it's carrying four bombs. How massive! Winders, two external tanks, and it gives you the laser, the infrared uh, sensor. And the infrared then, sensor. Oh, and then you and then you put your AIM 120s on the wingtips. All right. Then he doesn't even know why uh, the they go on the wingtips instead of under the wings. Painting guide, again, obviously, to me, it always puts it in black and white. I guess uh, some some older kids are still in black and white. I'm sorry for the disgusting but noise. It's, it's hard call, to drink call, out of that one. Call, uh, call out and your decal sets. Like I said, they give you block 32 for the California Air National Guard, block 25 for the Air National Guard. And uh, I believe it's the other side. Yes, and then the other side has the Block 32 for the Arkansas Air National Guard. 
He's yeah, only saying block 32 and block 25 because it says there, it says it on the sheet. He has no idea what it means. I, I fucking stenciling. guarantee it. And then uh, looks like uh, uh, they do have a decal set, uh, detail up set part set for the Finding Falcon that is all photo edge. As you can see here, you have photo to find etched, it. Not and, edge. Uh, photo etched, not edge. Photo etched. It's etched. Photo. Right. Photo so let's etched. get down. It's already been five not minutes. Let's get down and start looking at some parts. Uh, I did find out from Listen. somebody that said uh, not to the, for the Tamiya kits, but for another kit that I'm going to be doing an inbox review on. Is uh, well, good thing we know about that other kit that you're not even telling us what it is, parts. and it has nothing to do with this. But, all right, enough with that. Let's get on to the next one. All right, so here's the clear canopies. Uh, one thing I gotta warn you guys about when opening up the canopies, uh, Tamiya does a great job in making sure they're secured by stapling the bags. Make sure that when you're removing the clear parts that you remove the staple first because you can easily drag Got it. the staple Or do what every the other modeler canopy. in the world does and just so, use your little uh, razor knife to slice right through there. The clear canopy avoiding right that staple completely and tossing that part off. Or, you know, uh, or you, you could just leave the staple right in the middle of the bag of and then just have to you wiggle around it. Mold line. So one thing you want to do is make sure you clean up the mold line. Uh, one good thing is that the, there's no mold line in the back because it's covered with a frame. You can see the mold right. line right uh, there. You, you can see the mold line <laughs> next parts, to his thumb. Clear canopies. They give you one where it's clear, and then you have the other one which is smoked. It's not sm I believe, smoked. Like, what is it, a fucking brisket that you're going to put on your plane? The F-16, sometimes, some, some have a perfectly clear canopy, and some have a slightly... Um, yellow tinted canopy and that has to do more with electronics and the functions in the jamming environment uh, than anything I'm not gonna even get into it but you know this guy who's talking about in the beginning I missed it you I, I saved you about the bubble and his throwing up and blah 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 and the doctor wants him to not eat so much brisket of course he would think it has to do with being smoked and it's not anything else it's his smoked canopy and looking at this one yep same thing it's got a mold line all right so definitely that's one thing you want to definitely uh try to steer clear of uh try to not scratch them but also you can clear out that mold line. <laughs> you can what you can burp on camera what what what's that Now, you guys recognize that he has in the past edit. We've seen him edit. We've seen him do smash cuts, right? We've seen him stop the video and start it again at a different point. Not my style. Yeah, I like I, I like to fade, but you know, smooth transitions, but whatever. We have uh, seen him do that. Ordinance. Fantastic then. You know why fantastic then? Because not saying anything at all means you can't say anything wrong. I respect this. I, I respect this a lot right here. This, not so much. Could we have cut this and like come back when it's opened? I don't know why he did all the editing early on. And then it's making us stare at this disgusting grody phone looks like it's been up the dog's ass. <clears throat> but, you know, it's his video. Uh, I know what he's I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to show us the detail in those what we call panel lines. Which is good. He's trying to show us good things here. I, I, I understand it's an awkward view, but he's, he's trying to do a good unboxing in this part. I can't fault him for it. It's just the camera works a little weird the way he's doing it. But he's, he's getting good views of the different detail parts that modelers would worry about. Now, there is some fine detailing. I don't know if you can see with my camera phone. I, I legitimately like forgot he was going to go right into that, but I'm glad me and him agree about something finally. Uh, looks like uh, interesting. 
is that it looks like it gives you some uh, poly caps and it gives you, looks like some pins. Can, can we see them? That's interesting. Thanks, bro. Yeah, poly caps and pins. I wonder where that's going to go, bro. Again, yeah. if you're experienced in modeling, that's that's a that's an upgrade. The way to uh, me it gives you that about, uh, to put together things. Five bags of sprues, but that's to me up for you. This is the cockpit and the lower half of the fuselage. And once again, if you guys are not used to mod, this is very standard model unboxing stuff. So you know this is. It might seem a little boring, but if you're if you're interested in seeing how the model comes out of the box and like how the detailing is and how much work it's going to take to like bring those details out, this is all good stuff. This is this is what modelers need to see. Landing gear. True. Yes, it is. Thank you. I don't know if you guys are seeing this really good. I do have an issue with trying to keep my camera phone in a certain spot. So I'm trying to open up these packages. I, I'm going to say this like while he's doing this. To everybody that wants to do YouTube videos, you can get cell phone camera, cell phone tripods. Very inexpensive. And they're good quality on eBay. Uh, sorry, not eBay. On Amazon. Um, so that's like step one to upping your game, like on social media stuff. It's just a good quality tripod to hold your image still and hold it where you want it to be and give your, give your viewers a good view of what you're doing. I mean, just side note, um, very right. easy to do. You don't need a fancy camera. There's Colonel Fuel Tank. That's a wheel. Back and front, as a matter of fact. Those are LAU 129 launch rails. Ordnance. Landing gear. I don't see any landing gear there. I see a wheel. And, uh, external tank. It, Colonel Tank, you show him your respect. Uh, yeah, the big ones. Like that, that would be under the fuselage. No, it would be under the wing. But you don't know the so difference, so it's okay. Of these in separate bags. And here's the. I'm sorry, there's two. Those are the external tanks. These are the uh, external tank that goes under the belly. <laughs> Wait, those are the external tanks. This is the external tank. Seen a lot of good detail in the I mean if the guy would just work on his wording, I think he'd I think he I, I think this would have come out a lot better. So But yeah, I mean that's that's all the sprues. And then last but not least we have stencil decals. Those, those are like actually the, um, the seatbelts. So, so those are uh, just to be technical. Those are those are armament decals, uh, not aircraft eagle. stenciling decals. Eagle but I'm not going to make a big deal with it. Oh, that's the the, the buffalo for uh, uh, for the. Uh, Did he Arkansas just? Uh, <laughs> and he, okay, now listen. You don't even have to be an aircraft expert. What animal represents Arkansas in any kind of? Any kind of state competition. Could it be the Arkansas Razorback? I'm just throwing that out there. I don't even like sports that much. But I know that if I have to pick a team, animal-wise, to represent Arkansas, it's going to be the Razorbacks. Right? Yeah? Not a buffalo. On the Arkansas airplane. Remember what I always said, guys. Make sure you keep this on the decals. It'll protect the He's, decals. You don't know. Don't All listen right. to this, dude. So I have literally there. hundreds and hundreds of decals. They put that in there so nothing happens decals. to decals in transit. So don't worry, guys. You don't need to keep that on your decals. But he wants to sound very official about it. And looking at the decals, decals were manufactured in 2008, so I'm going to say that this kit is probably a rebox. He doesn't know. <laughs> he uh, doesn't. It's... 
or it's or they just added more parts that could be added more parts because I mean it gives you a nice slight smoke you fucking dweeb it's not oh it's smoke wait a minute, wait a minute. do we just do we just so the canopy is high we're gonna leave it at that that's why that one okay so it's high but being manufactured in 2008 has nothing to do with that because that is a standard feature in most Tamiya F16 models, is to give you the option between the tinted, not smoked out, but the tinted canopy and other. Um, yes, he is right. This kit comes with other parts. However, it's not necessarily a rebox, because a rebox is when you take the same kit, you put it in a new box, and you change the artwork on the box. This is not a rebox. This is this is a this is a variant of the F16. They they previously did an F16 block 5052 CJ. This is the F16 which represents the block 25/32, which is it. But this is this is what I'm talking about. People that want to sound like they know what they're talking about and just don't. So, from this point on, the guy goes to show his face again and talk about how much we should all like, subscribe and and share and all this stuff and you know how thorough and wonderful his review of the model kit was um i want to reiterate one more time i am not i am purposely not showing you who the guy is because i'm not trying to like i'm not trying to out somebody as sucking and i'm not trying to make a personal thing against somebody i'm, I'm just people wanted another military react video and this kind of i think is I, I, I'm commenting on this because it's funny how much this guy doesn't know about the thing he's talking about, making the video, trying to review a product for other people to watch. It's just, it's ridiculous. Um, this video is about a year old, so perhaps he has learned and gained experience in that year, and, and I hope, but um, there's, you know, people, people ask me my advice about YouTubing, and I'm like, why are you asking me? I'm a nobody. Go ask like, go ask that eight-year-old that makes twenty-two million dollars a year with toys. Ask somebody like Mariah Elizabeth, who has like eight million subscribers, and like, actually, Mariah Elizabeth is a great artist. I'm not making, I'm not even making fun of her. Like, uh, I watch her channel with Ethan because Ethan really likes the artwork. She's an artistic genius, and she has cultivated a good following. She has great cinematography, great production values. Like. My point is, there's a lot of people in the world who know a lot more about how to do this than I do. But if, you know, somebody wants to ask me, I give them all the best advice I can about where how I got to where I am. And a lot of it has to do with, number one, pick a subject you're passionate about. Like, well, I say, I say, look, are you doing this because you want to get, you want to make money and you want to get clicks? Or are you doing this because you want to connect with a community that you are passionate about? And, you know... People usually tell me, well, I'm passionate about something and I want to... I'm like, good, because the best videos are not ones that you're making just because shit is trending. The best videos are ones that you make because you're passionate about a subject. Because people can see that. People can sense that. And they connect with that. But being passionate about something and being knowledgeable about it are two separate things. So you can love fluffy unicorns. But if you're not an expert on fluffy unicorns, you're going to have trouble building a following because people that are into fluffy unicorns on the internet probably have some base knowledge of fluffy unicorns. And if you can't meet their base expectations, they're not going to stick around. Um, so this is an example of, you know, this video has been up for about a year, has about 300 views and like four likes. Um, now, I, I'm not a big believer in, in, in the, you know, in the numbers either. I'm not. But I am saying that you can find other reviews of the exact same product with much more knowledgeable reviewers. And yes, they probably do have bigger channels too, but they get, you know, their knowledge of the, their knowledge of the subject builds their channel is what I'm saying. Um, I am all for passion and, and pride and, and, you know, love of a subject. But if you don't combine that with, with the correct knowledge and wisdom of that subject, you're gonna put out a lame video. When, in, in, in a subject like this, where people are coming looking for information. You know, that's what they're looking for in a video like this. They want to see about this. I came to this platform 
looking for information about the model kit. And, you know, and, and it's happened to me where I, you know, people have left comments where they're like, look, five minutes into your video, I couldn't watch it anymore because you were this or that, or you said this or that. And I'm like, all right, well, sorry. My videos aren't for everybody. I get it. But at the same time, you know, that's something I need to be aware of. I either need to accept the fact that, um, you know, if I make videos a certain way, it's going to turn certain people off. Um, or I need to, or I need to, you know, be extremely knowledgeable and not open my stupid mouth when I am not 100% sure I know what I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I'm, I'm never going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to say what I think. And I would rather apologize and say I was wrong later. But I think one of the things that connects me to my viewers, you guys, is that I, I, I tell you what I think. I never, I never play the game of, well, I don't, I want, I care about, you know, I want a million subscribers and I want these sponsors and blah, blah, blah. I don't, I don't do that. I don't. Fuck that. Fuck those guys. Fuck, fuckity, fuck, fuck, fuck. Anyway. Um, so if you think that I was just being overly mean, hey, I'm sorry, that was not my point, but, um, hopefully this guides, this might, hopefully it was a little bit funny. I was having some fun, but also I hope maybe it, it, it can help help some some people maybe guide them and 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 you know point out maybe some things not to do maybe it's my hat crooked i don't know but so i hope that this did this did entertain those who want to see new reaction video and uh, i am always out to please those who regularly support the channel and um hey let's have some fun if you guys want to check out the model building thing um you can check out my other channel. It's, uh, it's here. Um, and I'll put a link to it in the video description too. Yeah, just click that. It'd probably be a little bit easier. But I like to build models. It's fun. Um, and I, I do them a little bit differently than some other people do. So I'm, sometimes I just build the straight historical thing. Sometimes I do what we call what ifs, which is like uh, basically whatever the hell comes out of my mind. I want to see this plane look like this because it doesn't actually exist. Let's do this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my hat off so I can drink from this regularly. And in the meantime, remember that you guys are all absolutely awesome. I appreciate every single one of you. And I will be back again real soon.